Hey guys, we are back and this is the final video in this video series. And in the previous video, we set up our best lap and best race time uh, displays. So those fly in, we animated those so they fly in and out uh, whenever we achieve those. We also set up uh, the display of our gold, bronze, and silver uh, goals to meet so that if the player can no longer obtain those, we remove those from display. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do is a little bit more polish before we close out. Uh, currently, we're using a trigger box uh, for our visual indication of what the player needs to drive through. In this video, we'll create a quick particle effect, uh, so a fiery ring that the player needs to drive through. So we'll set that up, uh, do a couple more uh, cleanup items, and then we'll also create a brand new map uh, and add our checkpoint system to it. So we can show you how you can uh, take this system moving forward and create your own maps uh, using this system. So uh, let's go ahead and continue. Uh, first thing that we're going to do, though, however, I noticed in the previous video uh, towards the end as we were testing that our race timer actually wasn't stopping when we finished our race. So uh, let's go ahead and fix that really quickly. We're going to go down to the content browser under the blueprints folder. Let's open up our My Player Controller blueprint. And with it open, here's all our script for the player controller. Uh, over in the My Blueprint panel, we have some functions. We have our lap time check and our race time check. If we open up our lap time check uh, towards the beginning of the script, once we are checking to see if the player has a new lap time, the first thing that we are doing is stopping the lap time. Uh, we did not add that for the race time check. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll click the race time check here, double click. And over at the beginning, here's our race time check. We are missing our stop race time. So let's go ahead and call that. So I'm gonna left click and drag off this here and say stop race time, like so. So it'll call that function and stop our race time like so. So that's all we need to do. I just noticed that in a previous video. Let's go ahead and uh, compile now and save. And let's close out this blueprint. <clears throat> so uh, let's go ahead and start working on our particle effect. Uh, to do this, we're actually going to use an existing particle effect from the starter content uh, that we included and just modify it a little bit. So let's go to the content browser under the starter content folder and the particles folder. So let's go ahead and double click, open it up. And there's a bunch of particles in here that we could play with. We're going to use this P underscore fire, and we're going to turn this into a fiery ring. So let's right click on this and let's duplicate it, just in case you want to keep the other copy for some reason. Uh, we're going to call this P underscore fire ring. So this is the P underscore fire ring. Go ahead and double click and open it up. And it's going to open up Cascade, which is the particle uh, editing system here in Unreal. Uh, this video is not necessarily going to be a tutorial on Cascade. Uh, this is going to be a kind of quick do as I'm doing and, and pick up things as we're going along here together, uh, rather than a full-blown explanation of Cascade. Uh, there are several other videos out there uh, if you'd like to take a look at those for a more in-depth look at uh, this system here. So uh, first thing we're going to do, we have these emitters in the upper, uh, upper part of our uh, editor here. These are all the emitters that contribute to the effect that you're seeing in the viewport here. Uh, we don't necessarily need all of these, so we're going to delete some of these. So I'm going to click on uh, this one here, this distortion. I'm going to right click on it, and under emitter, we're going to delete the emitter. So go ahead and delete that. It may give you a message that says emitter state is different than other LOD levels. That's fine. Just click yes to delete it. And we're going to do all of these except for this very first flames here. We're going to delete these four. So I'm going to right click, go to emitter and delete, right click, emitter, and delete, right click, and delete, uh, yes, go ahead and delete it, right click, and delete, yes. So we should only have this one emitter here, because we're going to modify this one to get the effect that we need. So uh, first thing that we're going to do, make sure that we have nothing selected, so I'm going to click off in this empty space over here, make sure we have nothing selected. Gonna hop down to the details panel now here so we can make some modifications to it. Uh, let's actually go down to the LOD distances. So under LOD here, go ahead and expand LOD distances. And we're gonna change uh, both of these. We're gonna bump these way up to make sure that the player can see these uh, from very far away. So we're gonna bump these way up to say 10,000, like so. And you can come back and change these later if you'd like. Uh, but we're gonna start out with that. So now that we've changed both of those, uh, we're going to hop up to the required module now. So make sure you select the required module. And for this one, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to search for the, the uh, setting that we want here. The setting that we want is called use local space. 
So we've searched for this setting here. It says, if true, update the emitter in local space. Yes, we want to go ahead and check that. And then the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go to our spawn module now. We're going to kill our filter here. And we're going to go down and expand rate and distribution. And we want to change uh, the value of the constant here. So currently it's set to 5. Uh, so we're going to bump this up, and it's going to increase uh, the amount uh, of, of spawn uh, emitters here. So we're going to bump this way up. We're going to bump this up to, say, 200. So we get a big fireball of sorts. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we're going to go to the lifetime module. And for this one, we're going to expand lifetime. Uh, we're going to expand distribution. And we're actually going to change the distribution type here. Currently, it's using a float uniform. Click this drop down. Let's change this to a float constant. That's what we want. It's going to go away for a moment, but we're going to change that in a minute. We're actually just going to change the lifetime constant to be 2.0. So something like so, so it's a big fireball now. Uh, let's go ahead and select our sphere uh, module here. We're actually going to delete that. So I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard to delete that. We don't necessarily need that. Uh, we're going to go to the initial size now, and we're going to make some changes to this. So under start size here, go ahead and expand that, expand distribution. Uh, the initial size, we're going to change this from a uniform or a vector uniform to a constant. So go ahead and choose constant. And our emitter is going to go away momentarily because we need to specify the constants. Uh, we're only going to change the X and the Y for this. So we're going to set the X to 180 and the Y to 180 as well. And hit enter. Look at our fireball. That is pretty, pretty fancy. Uh, we've got a little bit more to go. So let's do a couple more things here. We're going to uh, select our size by life here because it's going to be uh, the same size the whole time. We're not going to change it uh, by its life. So we're going to delete that. And we're also going to kill the additional light uh, that is associated with this. So this light module here, going to delete that as well. And then the last thing that we need to do, let's right click down here in this empty space. We're going to right click and we're going to go to location. And under location, we're going to choose cylinder seed. This is the one that we want. So go ahead and choose that. And make sure that you select that new module now. So the cylinder seed. We're going to go over to the details panel now, and we're going to make some quick modifications to this. So under start radius, go ahead and expand this. Under distribution, we're going to change the constant of this. We're going to bump this way up, actually. We're going to bump this up to 1,000, like so. And that's going to give us a cool, that's pretty awesome for an uh, area of effect spell. If you're interested in making one of those, you get something like this. Pretty cool. However, that's not going to be perfect for our ring because we're going to want to drive through that. So we're going to actually hollow out this uh, inner part. And we're going to do that by, first of all, changing the height axis here. We're going to change this from Z to X. And then the last thing that we're going to do, uh, let's go ahead and find our surface only. So whether the part of particle effects will spawn on the surface of this primitive. This is what we want. So go ahead and check this. And now we have a fancy ring of sorts. Looks somewhat fancy to me. So this is what our players will drive through. <clears throat> so I think this is good. Let's go ahead and save <coughs> and close this out because we are done inside this particle effect. So uh, next thing that we're going to do actually is apply this particle effect to our checkpoints here. So we're going to go to our blueprints folder and we're going to go to our checkpoint blueprints. Go ahead and double click, open it up. And we're going to go to the Viewport tab once we have our Checkpoint Blueprint up. So go ahead and check the uh, Viewport tab. We'll zoom out a little bit. And over in the Components, let's select our Particle System that we added. We just need to tell it to use the one we just created. So down in the Details panel, under Particles and Template, go ahead and click this drop down. And we're going to change this uh, to use the P underscore Fire Ring that we specified. So go ahead and select that. Now, yours may be a little bit bigger because I was experimenting to get the proper size uh, in between videos. Uh, if yours is a little bit bigger, go ahead and go to the Details panel and change your scale to 0.25 by 0.25 by 0.25. That should scale it down to about this size. And that looks pretty good because it fits just inside of our trigger box. I think that it should be just fine. <laughs> So with that, once you've scaled it down, go ahead and compile and save. 
And then let's hop to the event graph. There's uh, one quick thing that we need to do. Let's go to our event graph. And here is our script for our checkpoint. Towards the end, uh, we are setting our trigger to be hidden in game. We no longer need to do that because we're going to be calling just our particle system here. So I'm going to hold Alt to my keyboard and left click on this pin here. It should disconnect uh, the trigger from both of these nodes. We do need to connect our trigger back up to the generate overlap events, like so. But our particle system is actually going to be the one that we are hiding in game now. The trigger we don't really care about because uh, it's going to be uh, hidden in game by default always. Uh, before I forget, actually, let's go back to our particle system. And let's scroll down. And this one also may not be set by default for you. Uh, but go to the rendering section and make sure that you set it to hidden in game. It probably was unchecked. Go ahead and check it uh, to make sure that our particle system is by default hidden in game, because we're going to turn that on through script. So with that, we've disconnected our trigger. We're no longer worried about showing that in game. Let's compile and save and then close out this blueprint. Now we're about 11, min 11 minutes in. A couple more things we need to do. Let's hop over to our tracker blueprint. So double click, open that up. And inside of it, on the activate checkpoint function, so in the My Blueprint panel, just double click, open up, uh, activate checkpoint. Uh, we need to also disconnect, disconnect our trigger from this set hidden in game, because we no longer want to show our trigger. All we want to show is our particle system. So I'm going to hold Alt and left click on the trigger here disconnect it from both of these, reconnect our trigger to the generate overlap events like so. So all we're showing is our particle system. So with that, let's compile and save, and then let's close out this blueprint. <clears throat> now there's two more things we'll do, uh, and we should be ready to test our system here for the final time. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm not playing without sound. I'm playing without sound, I should say. Uh, it's just to spare you from hearing it in the background here. However, if you are playing with sound and you're going through these checkpoints and you kind of feel that you're not getting a loud enough sound for when you clear the checkpoint, uh, go ahead and go to your sound uh, assets inside of the level here. And for your sound effect, uh, in the details panel, you could specify the volume multiplier. What you can do is select your music uh, sound effect and say bump that down a little bit. So we've bumped ours down to 0.5 here. If you bump that down, then by default, the sound effect will be a little bit louder when you clear your checkpoints. So go ahead and experiment with those uh, values if you want to change those up so that you can hear your checkpoint sounds a little bit better if you'd like. The last thing I wanted to do is go to the world outliner here and search for checkpoint, or just check. It will give you all of your checkpoints here in your level. Uh, what we're going to do is actually select all of our checkpoints. I'm going to select this first one here, hold Shift, select the bottom one. I'm going to go down to the Details panel now. And for location, we're actually going to change the Z value so that all of our checkpoints in our level are of consistent height. Uh, so let's go ahead and change the Z value. We're going to set this to say, we'll set this to 100, 100 CM, or let's say 110. So 110 CM. So all of our checkpoints will now be the same height as we're coming through them. However, we're all going to want to bump the ones uh, for the jump, the jumps back up. So I'm going to take this one and just slide this one back up, like so. And we'll slide this one up as well. You could actually have these be of consistent height if you wanted to, but for the ones on the ground, we want those to be of the same height at least. I'm going to bump this one up, something like that. So with all of that, uh, let's save everything. So we save our level, save all of our assets. Let's play. And we have our gold, silver, and bronze. Uh, we can left click to start the race. And there's our fade in. So it says three, two, one. Now on the upper left, it says lighting needs to be rebuilt. Uh, we haven't actually built out our game yet, but we can do that in a moment. Uh, we won't actually test it, but I'll show you where you can do that to get rid of that message. So we're going through one final time here. Again, I just noticed that I've changed my uh, laps to two laps. You may still be on one lap. You can change that again inside of the tracker. Uh, we bumped ours up to two just for testing. So if I go through here, that is a new lap record of 28 seconds. And we're going to go around one more time. Uh, what we'll do after this, actually, is show you how you can 
take this system and use it in a brand new map. Uh, and that should uh, wrap up this series, actually. So we got the loop here. And if we go through this, another new lap record of 25 seconds, a race record of under a minute, or animating uh, widgets are flying in and out. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, I think we are in a good enough state here. Let's hit escape. And if you want to get rid of that message that was showing up, just click the build button uh, and it will build all of the lighting and the geometry for you. It may take a moment. We're not actually going to do it here because it might take a second to just do everything, to build everything. So uh, if you'd like to do that, go ahead and click build uh, is what you want to do. So uh, 15 minutes in here. Uh, very quickly to wrap up this series, let's show you how you can use this checkpoint system uh, in, a, in an entirely new map. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So uh, we're going to go down to the content browser. And we're going to go to the Vehicle Advanced. And we're going to go to the Maps folder. So go ahead and double click, open up the Maps folder. And inside of this folder, we created a copy of the Advanced uh, Vehicle Map. We're going to do that again. So we're going to right click on this one. We're going to duplicate it. We're going to call this new map Mountain Madness. Like so. It's going to be our new, new level, so I'm going to double click and open it up now. Uh, it's going to say, ask us to save everything. Uh, sure, let's go ahead and save it. Following assets, uh, oh, we can't save it yet because in, in saving these assets will allow them to be unloaded. That's fine. Go ahead and click OK. We can save it once the map opens. So here's our new map. It says Mountain Madness at the top. Let's save it now. And our map is empty. We have no checkpoints, nothing in them. But here is our new race that we want to create. So our artists have come in and created this race for us. Now we want to populate with our, with our checkpoints. Uh, what we'll do is add some checkpoints around this really quickly. Uh, so I'll add a checkpoint, say, right around here. We'll add one there. We'll add one here, maybe up here, over here, on the back side, and then one more over here. Uh, and then we're going to add all of those checkpoints to our tracker, uh, and our system will work. So let's go ahead and do that. So first thing we need to do is actually move our vehicle over there. So I'm going to take our vehicle here. I'm just going to move him over, something like so. I'm going to hit end on my keyboard to snap him down to the ground. So I think that looks good. So we'll start out right here, like this. So let's add a checkpoint here. So let's go to the Blueprints folder. Let's take our checkpoint, just drag it into the level, like so. And I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible because uh, this is pretty much the end. All we're going to do now is add our checkpoints, add our tracker, add all of our checkpoints to the tracker, and then inside the tracker, specify how we want our race to play out. So that's all we need to do. And our system will just work. Our HUD will work, our sound effects will work, the logic will work. Everything will work for us. So I'm going to hold Alt and just drag out a copy real quick. Drag this one over here and kind of line it up, make sure it's not in the ground, doesn't have to be perfect. Something like this. That's good enough. So I'm going to do this as quickly as I can. Let's hold Alt, drag out a copy. We'll put one over here. Just flying around, placing checkpoints. I wish I had some back background music to play right about now, because this part, you could probably pause the video and skip ahead. Uh, but we'll just do it as quickly as we can here. Just got to make sure that our arrows are facing the way that we want our players to go. Something like this. So I'm just using the translation tool, using W to switch to that, using E to enter rotation mode. So I'm just alt dragging out a copy, moving this where I want, then pressing E to go into uh, rotation mode and rotating our arrow. Make sure it's in the direction uh, that we want. Let's move this over. Like this, like that. So we'll do two more. So I'm going to hold Alt, drag out a copy, and add one way down here. Something like this. Hit E, rotate it around. Let's add one more. So I'm going to hit W, Alt, drag out a copy, put this one way over here by our player start. down. 
like so. I'm gonna hit E, rotate it around, kind of move it back just a little bit. Our player is not necessarily gonna start at this one. We'll have him start where he is. I think that's fine. So we've added all the checkpoints that we wanted. Uh, our artist has come in and created our map for us. We have all our checkpoints. Uh, next thing we need to do is take our tracker from my blueprints, uh, from the blueprints uh, folder of our content browser. Left click, drag and drop him in our level. Uh, now all we need to do is uh, go down to the details panel, specify the settings that we want for this particular race. So for this particular race, we'll say it's one one lap. We'll say the gold time is 30 seconds. We'll say the silver is 60, and we'll say the bronze is 90. And our default best time is, we'll say, for fun, let's try and make this difficult on us. We'll say, no, let's not. Let's actually keep it as 30. <laughs> Just in case, we want to make sure our system is working. We should be able to beat 30 seconds. Uh, the default best time is also 30 seconds. We're going to rename this map now to Mountain Madness. We're also going to use our naming conventions. We're going to say mm underscore save the game. Now it's asking for our level music and checkpoint sound effect. If we had different music, uh, we could place that in our level and use that. But we're going to use the same ones just for this. So in our audio folder, going to take our realistic rendering, going to take our blueprint sound effects here, uh, going to check or uh, select our uh, music here, our realistic rendering music, gonna bump that down to say 0.5 so that our sound effect is a little bit louder. Going to reselect our track tracker and specify our level music to use realistic rendering and our checkpoint sound effect uh, to use our sound effect. Now the last thing that we need to do, we need to make sure that we add our checkpoints. Currently, if we tried to play, our checkpoint system would not work. We need to specify the order, the sequence that we want our checkpoints to appear. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven checkpoints. So we need to add those now. So we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we just need to assign the order now and we're done. So we're gonna say, Checkpoint zero is going to be the first checkpoint, so checkpoint, and then checkpoint two, and then checkpoint three, and so on. Four, five, six, and seven. So we are done. We have an entirely new map uh, that uses our system, that uses our HUD. Everything in, uh, that we've set up will work inside of this map now. So if we play now, here's our new map. It's called Mountain Madness. There's our new uh, goals to try to beat. There's our best overall time. It's using the default uh, value for those, which we've set to, if we look at it, uh, 30 and 60. reason it's doing that is in, be in between maps. Actually, let's, let's play. Let's hit R. Uh, in between uh, videos, I was testing this out to make sure it worked uh, before we actually tried to demo it. So there's our best overall times, because I already had a save game uh, for this. That's why it recognized I had a save game and loaded that instead. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, test this now. There's our new best overall time, best lap time. So I'm going to hit uh, left click to play. There's our countdown, fade it in. And when we play now, there is our HUD. It's working for us. Our checkpoints are working as we go through them. And if we beat 30 seconds, uh, we should get a new uh, lap record and race record. So as you can see, it's pretty quick and easy to have a new map uh, using the system that we've set up. Uh, all we did was take our checkpoints, place them at our level, add them to the tracker, and specify any parameters that we wanted for this race, and our system works. And we have a new lap record, a new race record, that all works. Uh, if we hit escape now, well, if we uh, finish the race, it will replay, but if we hit escape and we play, our save is intact and it's specific to this level because we're using different names for our save slots. So if we went back to our other uh, level, so if we did that real quick, let's go to our maps. Let's go to, let's save this first of all. Let's save all. Uh, if we go back to our loop-de-loop -loop map here and we play in this one, we have our unique saves for this map, etc. So that's it. We are done. We have made it through this uh, video series. Uh, we have created a time attack racer through blueprints and a little bit of UMG to create our HUD. We did a little bit inside of Cascade to create our particle effect. Uh, thank you guys for watching so much. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we will see you next time in another Unreal Engine video tutorial series.